somebody to ask me a question. Yeah, and Nathan, uh, Tanks, I'll let Tanks ask the question. He was, he's got yes, one, and, then there's a, and there's a couple other ones that kind of go together. Um, okay. Um, first one is, is pre-baiting worth it? Uh, a lot of outfitters offer like uh, two, three days of pre-baiting for X amount. All right. Is there a second part? You got a second part or, or a second question uh, behind that? Or the second question is, uh, how do you manage the time in a combo hunt? For example, leopard, Cape buffalo. All right. Can I, can I answer the second one first? Absolutely. All right. So my, my answer to that, how to manage time on a combination hunt. I, 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 don't, I, I don't like a combination hunt. A cat hunt, a leopard hunt is a leopard hunt. I like to stay as focused on that cat as possible. It's the hardest animal in Africa to kill on a regular basis. Um, even when things are good, they're tough. Uh, you, you hopefully hired a, a PH that is a big asset and, and knows things that a baiting vehicle can never know. So you don't want to take him off the job. Um, once again, the big money, the big money is on the cat. Buffalo are cheaper than cat. Now, if you're on a elephant, if you're on a trophy elephant leopard hunt, back well, we're back to the same thing. I probably wouldn't book a combination. Uh, maybe have that option as an add-on after the cat, but I like to stay focused on the cat. I like to stay focused on the cat. With that being said, most of the hunts in good areas turn out to be a great combination, right? Um, usually on most of the leopard hunts that we do, a man gets his leopard, a man gets a cape buffalo or two, a man gets a sable, a heart of beast, a zebra, a dica, two or three other animals. He's gonna kill eight to nine species, but he's gonna get his leopard. So once again, that's a combo hunt. He's got two of the big pots, but do I want to bite off a uh, croc and hippo with a leopard? I can do it, and I've done it many, many times. I don't prefer to do that. I prefer to be a leopard hunt, and let's see if we hunt a croc and hippo, right? And I like to be very upfront because focus on the cat, very, very important. All right, I, I feel that I've got my point across there. Um, it, every area is different. Everybody's different. Every client is different, right? You, you may be... Um, I mean, shoot, Andy, you may, this could be a leopard elephant combo for you. And then your next hunt is a lion leopard combo. And yeah, you're going to get your leopard eventually if you keep doing those combo hunts in good areas. So then that may be the best of your time because of your individual hunting plan. But generally, I don't like combo hunts. Uh, now, a friend of mine spent 70 days in a blind before he got his. And he was pretty was that? unlucky. Oh, re repeat that, sir. A friend of mine spent 70, 70 days in a blind before he got his leopard. Uh, he was pretty unlucky. W was he on a combo hunt? Nope. <laughs> he should have picked, he, a, uh, he uh, picked he a different was area. He really pissed off with this other guy that went after him and got his leopard the first day and a lion the second day. I mean, okay. it was... Same area. Yeah, once again, back to this, my page one of scouting. A good area for what you want to hunt is very, very important, right? Um, we The most expensive and frustrating leopard hunts are the fifth one that you bought for $15,000 or $20,000, right? You've effectively... Um, you spent over a hundred grand, you still don't have a leopard. You probably maybe spent 200 grand. Um, and that gets 70 days in a blind, right? We don't, uh -uh. 
We, we don't sit 70 days in a blind. We go to that uh, blind it, and we it kill was that. multiple trips. No, oh, yes, sir. Yes, yes. I, I, I understand. I understand that. Um, but, but still, that's a lot of sitting and a very low percentage of, of, of success. That, that's, anyway, tough. You know, sometimes it's just tough, right? There's nothing easy about a cat. Um, so now, uh, pre-baiting, is it worth it? It's worth it. It's worth it if it's actually done and done correctly. I believe most, m most outfits do um, do it correctly if it's allowed. Um, it, it is good. It is good. Yeah, I don't, it depends on the cost versus benefit. Um, meaning I typically, I don't sell pre-baiting personally. Now I can only go back to me. I don't sell pre-baiting. If I'm in an area, I obviously, I don't schedule a cat hunt typically right out of the gate. I probably have a couple buffalo hunters in two weeks before. And then I have things rolling without selling pre -bait. Um, but there's cost and things that go into that as well. It, it, it probably is worth it because once again, it goes back to a function of time, but you'd have to see the area. If it's an area with not a lot of leopard, I'd put the money towards it, right? I'd put the money towards it. If it's an area, if you pick the right area, like with me, you, uh, the, I don't know, we have some, like if, we have some great areas with a lot of cats. We don't sell pre -baiting. Um, So it would depend on the area, but I would say go with it, right? I would say go with it because it's all about, once again, it's a function of meat and time. And the more time those baits are out there, then, then the better chance you have. And the more success you have early, the better the safari is going to be overall. And then, um, yeah, so, so I, I, I would do it. So good, good, good question. All right, uh, Mark, what else we got? There, uh, Nathan, there's three that kind of go down the same path or general thing. So I'm going to, I just kind of lump them together. But uh, Art had asked, you know, how much bait are you shooting, which you kind of addressed a little bit. And then, and then what do you shoot for bait? And then Jeffrey had asked what, what bait do the cats like? You know, is there a bait that they like more than another, essentially? Yeah. Gotcha. And then that it doesn't say the username; it just says iPhone. Um, but are you shooting trophy animals for bait, or are you just shooting on opportunity? So those kind of all went together. So I just kind of lump them together. Perfect, perfect. Um, all right, so we've got um, how many baits? Well, Arch was how many baits? Uh, how many baits are you are you shooting? Basically. Um, I like to have three baits per cat. I like to have three baits per cat. I like to be baiting at least four different male leopards, possibly five. My average, my average for me is on a on a cat hunt. If we have somewhere between 14 and 18 baits hung over the duration of the hunt, doesn't surprise me a bit. We also may be feeding seven or eight leopards. That doesn't surprise me a bit either. So we keep shooting bait. We keep shooting bait and stringing it up until until you have your cat. So I, it's a we, we keep on going. We keep on baiting. Now, how, the type of meat they prefer, I, you know, it, it that boils down to the to the ecosystem and what that cat is somewhat used to, to some degree. To us, to another degree, they love a warthog and they love a zebra. Can't, I mean, they, they like cats like zebra meat, something about the taste. Um, cats, they, they just can't resist a warthog, right? I mean, it, 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 they just, they love a warthog. Um, once again, it's it's uh, something they've grown up eating. So to say that, uh, to say that uh, heart of beast is better than kudu, to say that uh, dica is worse than elan, now, nah, uh, meat, meat is meat to some degree. I have noticed that zebra are the right size, the right density of meat. The fat smells right, and it doesn't necessarily dry up 
too fast, and the cats love zebra meat. And I know this because I've hung, I've had harder beast and zebra, and they eat the zebra. I've had kudu and warthog, and they eat the warthog. So th those two are the best. People say they like baboons in some areas. I mean, areas where a leopard has to prey on and eat baboons on a regular basis, it's not a good leopard area because baboons taste like shit. Everybody knows that. So anyway, that's my that's my two cents on on what meat they like. Um, the do you shoot trophy animals for bait? Depends on the country and depends on the regulations. Um, yes, well, you shoot whatever animal you're allowed legally to shoot. When you need bait, you shoot them, right? Um, it's it's fairly frustrating uh, if you need bait and the guy's shot three kudu and you see a mature male kudu and it's 49 inches instead of 50 inches and he doesn't pull the trigger and it's day one of your cat hunt. That's frustrating because a cat hunter is always thinking about meat and getting it up, right? It's a mature male kudu. I'm not saying we shoot small stuff. Mature male kudu, that makes five baits. I want it in the back of my truck, right? I, I don't want to be talking about inches on the horn. With that being said, I'm, I'm real picky, and if it's an immature animal, it's not hunted. Where we don't shoot immature animals or females. In Tanzania, that's by law. In, in Mozambique, I've used goats and donkeys, right? I mean, I, I've... I've I've used whatever I can use. Uh, so, but yeah, it depends on the country whether you're going to shoot trophies or meat. And uh, if you're shooting trophies for bait, that's that's good, right? I mean, I think that's good. I think that's great. Um, but that also adds to the bottom line. Some areas you pay less or more. You know, it, there's all things that can go along with the cost. So that's kind of that answers all those meat questions. Uh, we got any other ones? Nathan, I got one for you. Same about baiting. So does the cost of your leopard hunt include the cost of the bait or is the bait on top of the leopard hunt? That, that depends on the outfitter. It, it, it'll be itemized in the contract. Um, the, and, and for me, it depends on the country, right? Um, so like uh, Mozambique, you know, maybe it's $200 a goat, right? And that's hung in the tree as a pre-baiting thing whatever there's more the goat didn't cost 200 bucks but getting in the tree did right um the in zimbabwe uh people charge for female impala because they legally have a camp or bait quota right um so then that would be charged maybe 50 or 100 bucks in impala um then like in tanzania uh you have to shoot mature male animals so you're shooting trophy animals for your bait there's no bait quota. There's no goats to string up in the tree. So it's, uh, it depends on the country. Right. So, okay. So we're going to say we're going to go hunt Tanzania. We've paid for the leopard hunt. We, we see a zebra, we're going to put a zebra up for bait. We shoot that zebra. Is the fee for that zebra on top of yes. the cost of the leopard hunt? Yes, for sure. For sure. So, so yeah. you're paying for the leopard hunt and you're paying for the bait animal. Yes. And, and, and you shot that animal as a trophy. It's skinned. You bring it home. Um, it's hung as your bait and it is kicked off of your license. You cannot kill or be in possession of any animal that's not on your license. So you, you have a license that has X amount of animals, one of them being a leopard. But now to hunt that leopard, you're going to need to shoot a zebra and on your license, you can only kill two. So if you wound one, you're down to only one. So once again, you got to shoot well at your bait and depending on the country, but like you said, if we're doing it in Tanzania, it is, it is a, uh, it is added on to the cost of it. Um, so if, if we're shooting bait every day, and we're only allowed like two zebra, and you get four or five baits out of a zebra, and we're baiting 18 sites. I'm just trying to wrap my head around all this. All right, so uh, just a quick math on that. So let, let's go with four cats times three baits equals 12 baits, right? Right, yep, yeah, okay, I'm good. Now th that's minimum, that's minimum. Now. Let's take 12 baits 
and divide it up. One zebra is four bait. One heart of beast is four bait. One buffalo, six bait. We're done. But we're but is that all the bait for the fourteen days, or do we have to keep shooting? Well, it, it, it would depend. If we don't get a cat and we see an impala, if we've shot that in the first three days and we have it all strung up, which that's a lot of work to do in three days, um, mm -hmm. and then on the fourth day we see an impala, I want you to shoot him because I'm going to hang another bait with his front end, and then the back end is going to ride with me until I find a fresh leopard track I don't know about or one of the other baits is hit. It's meat management at that time. The, the, so, and then it's also, you know, I could stretch it a little thinner, right? I could get five baits out of a zebra. I can use the neck for a bait. But I don't like to do that because, once again, you're cutting corners, and cutting corners produces problems down the line. Let's do it the right way um, in the right spots and, 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 and get this job done effectively. So, um, yeah, so the, the, the lowest amount of bait that I've ever had a person shoot was one zebra. And we got a leopard on day two. And the most bait I've ever had a guy shoot would probably be, well, we, we, got, the, we got the leopard. But, I mean, if you shoot three buffalo and two zebra and two hard beast and a kudu and a roan and a sable, I mean, shit, that's, that's like, I mean, so sometimes you shoot a lot of animals there. Uh, well, also, the benefit to an area that has a lot of animals and a benefit to a kind of a top tier hunt, if you don't have those animals, you know, if you haven't shot a buffalo, then a buffalo, a leopard buffalo, a leopard hunt in Tanzania, you're going to get a buffalo. A leopard hunt in Zambia, you're going to get a buffalo. Now, in, in Mozambique or Zimbabwe, not necessarily. A lot of those big game areas that they may not have both, right? Um, Mozambique, they may not have both. So um, that's kind of how it. That's kind of how it works out on the meat management. Right. So this goes back to the combination hunt, right? Buffalo and leopard. I, I guess that's what we'd be talking about. So if we're going to just shoot a leopard, you want us to shoot a buffalo? For the yeah, bait. but we have. A, yes, sir. We have a lot of buffalo. So meaning. I'm not going to spend two hours tracking a herd of buffalo or eight hours tracking a herd of buffalo. We are going to see buffalo from the vehicle. We're we are going to get off. Shoot one. We're going to, if, if I see a bull, if I see a big bull, right, or if, or if me and the tracker look at that pile of, of, of buffalo shit and say, that they're behind the tree, right? They're behind the tree. I can see the duck. We're gonna go. We're gonna go hunt the buffalo because I need that meat. I, I want the meat. But I'm not gonna take a day old track and march you across Africa in the hopes of finding a buffalo. When my job on this cat hunt is to hang baits, attract male leopard, and get you your animal. That's my job, and I've got to manage that time. I got to be very conscious of that time. Same goes for a lion hunt. You got to be very, very conscious of the time, or you're not gonna have a good success rate over over the long term anybody can be lucky once or twice but you won't have a good success rate over the long term okay. so what you're so what you're saying is in tanzania that we're going to shoot a buffalo on a leopard hunt and we're going to shoot a good representative buffalo it might not be the largest one out there but it's going to be good representative trophy buffalo i seldom seldom have a guy not take a buffalo on a leopard hunt okay so, yeah, it, 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 I had one area a few years ago that had very few buffalo and I didn't want to hunt them there, but that's an exception and the clients knew that, but it had a ton of stable and roam. Anyway, whatever. Um, no, in Tanzania, uh, in my, I can speak for the areas that we have, you're going you're gonna to get a buffalo, right? And okay. you may not get them before the leopard, right? Lots of times we usually kill our leopard on day seven, eight, nine. That's typically when we get our leopard. And then we got several days to track buffalo and look for a bigger buffalo and do all these fun things. So. Okay. Hey, uh, Nathan, there's one from Nathan Box about the optimum distance 
15 yards from the line of the bait. And then having a rifle zeroed at 100 yards or, or what? That's right. That's right. Who, uh, Nathan, I, I'm going to get into that on our next section is setup. Uh, okay. So, in, in the uh, um, the next section is over setup, uh, and we're going to get into that. I got two more sections: setup and hunting of the cat. Now, um, I know everybody has a, a a life over and above uh, this Zoom safari, but um, I'm going to keep on rolling. Um, I'm going to keep on rolling, right?